Let me explain to you how I went from looking like this to looking like this, eating things like pizza and ice cream, and how you can do that too. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I wanna address a question that we get all the time. I get asked this question all the time, especially if I'm wearing a shirt like this where maybe I don't have any sleeves on and I'm going through the grocery store and someone says to me, hey, is that food healthy? Does that help you lose body fat? And it's a question I struggle to answer, but today's question actually comes from you guys. It comes from my Instagram direct message. So what I'd like to do is answer the question. And if you guys have questions, go to my Instagram direct message and we can discuss it. So first, what are the best things to eat for fat loss? Things like healthy fats, healthy carbs, and stuff to cut out. Like, should I be cutting out ice cream, right? So years ago when I struggled with actually losing body fat and struggled with this idea of how do I find that balance between being strong enough to lift in the gym where I can add muscle, but also being lean enough to look good, I didn't understand nutrition. But I often heard things were healthy for me. This is good, this is protein, this is bad, this is fat or carbs or whatever, right? You would always hear these terms, healthy, unhealthy, good, bad. And it wasn't until I removed that from my life, until I removed that binary thinking and started looking at food as fuel, right? and simply understanding the balance between how much fuel do I put in my body to reach my goals and how much is too much, okay? And I stopped looking at food as good and bad. In fact, you probably heard me say it before. There are no bad foods. We can take in food and turn it into energy. Now, there are certainly foods that are more likely to cause us problems, but those problems are the result of us over consuming them, okay? So inherently food is good. Why? It provides us energy, it provides us life, it provides us Hell, if you enjoy some cake, some ice cream, some things like that, maybe it's part of your culture, maybe you're celebrating a birthday. So the term healthy, we, we tend to give this moral value to something that's healthy, like broccoli, right? That's super healthy. If you're eating broccoli, you're a good person. Bullshit. It doesn't matter the moral value of the food, okay? It matters the big picture. Sometimes it is healthy to eat pizza. That's right. Why? Because health isn't just about the value of the food, the morals of the food. It's also the social situation. It's also understanding that we only get one life and we need to enjoy it, right guys? And I understand why some people want to label and demonize food, right? It's just easier for them. Oh, that's bad. I won't do it. This is good. I'll do this. And then they start to apply those values to other people, right? They feel superior because you know what? I eat healthy and that person doesn't. Well, I tell you what, I eat pizza, I eat ice cream, and I'm in better shape than all you guys, right? So I'm gonna explain to you how we can do this. So I wanna first talk about your question. What are some healthy fats? Where do I get my fat sources from? So if you're not a vegan or a vegetarian, my favorite source of fats is red meats. I love steak, okay? Um, and even some non-red meat sources, you know, like fish. Um, and I also love whole eggs. Whole eggs are a great source of fat, okay? avocado if you are a vegan or a vegetarian and nuts and there's all, lots of other sources but these are just the primary sources that I find I typically include in my meals and then we're going to talk about what your healthy carbohydrates are and I want to talk about why we use the term healthy when we talk about these foods so if we're talking about potatoes fruits grains rices and vegetables why do these foods get labeled as healthy why might these foods get labeled as healthy and here's kind of my best estimate of that term first of all it's very hard to overconsume to the point where you're gluttonous, where you can actually overconsume and put on body fat, right? I know potatoes sounds great, but if you take away the butter and the salt and just eat a boiled potato, I promise you, you cannot get fat eating just boiled potatoes, right? So that's kind of my definition. It's foods that have a lot of volume, they have a good amount of fiber, and they have a lot of micronutrients, which means we don't crave other things. I also tend to find that most of these items are single ingredient. Now I did say red meat, which is gonna have a lot of protein in it, um, but I also find that red, de red meat helps my digestion. So this is just my personal list. But single sources of fat, avocado, eggs do have some protein as well. Nuts also have a little bit of protein in them as well, but they're single source ingredients for the most part, especially when it comes to the carbohydrates. Most of these sources of carbohydrates are gonna be single ingredient. They're gonna have very minimal fats, right? They're going to have mostly all carbohydrates, right? So that's where we get this term healthy. That's why they're healthy. Why? Because it's hard to overconsume them. It's got a lot of fiber. It helps with digestion. You know, all the things that I mentioned, what is an unhealthy food, right? What are these foods? Why are these foods considered unhealthy? Well, if we're talking about 
ice cream, donuts, um, sausages, and then I said fried. Basically anything fried. If you're putting it in batter and putting it in oil and deep frying it, yeah, it's gonna taste amazing, but you're adding a ton of calories. But these foods are also highly palatable, okay? So sitting down and eating a tub of ice cream, if you ate that same volume of food in any other source of this, your calories would be slashed. Also, you wouldn't be as hungry as soon, okay? So I think the term unhealthy, when we think of it, or bad foods, applies to foods that, well, it's just easy, or over, uh, easy to consume. So how am I able to consume these foods and still stay on my plan? Well, they're not the primary focus of my diet. In fact, I don't primarily focus on any specific foods. I do find that I start to crave certain things. I start to lean on certain foods at different times of a diet. But if you don't understand the value of each food that you're eating, if you don't understand the protein, carbs, and fats that are in each source of food that you're eating, well, you might get stuck in these traps. And this was what happened to me for years. How did I go from looking like this to looking like this, eating ice cream and pizza? It's because I actually understood that my other 40 meals a week couldn't be ice cream and pizza, right? They had to be some chicken, some fish, some rice, some potatoes, some fruit, some veggies. Also, I had to balance that with being active and fit, okay? There's a lot of value in movement. I don't believe in starvation as an approach to lose body fat. I think that is a short-term success. It's going to set you up for long-term failures. One of the problems with this binary thinking when it comes to dieting is most people will say, well, I just don't want to lose weight. I don't have the willpower to cut out chocolate chip cookies, ice cream, and you know, French fries with cheese on it. If you understood that you don't have to do that, it would help the process. Now, by simply saying I'm allowed to have chocolate chip cookies, it changes the psychology, okay? Psychology is very important when it comes to weight loss. A lot of us focus on the physiology. You should be eating broccoli. You should be eating chicken. You should be eating your oatmeal. Well, what if I want chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> well, every now and then I do, but I don't find that they are off my plan. And therefore, when I have one, I don't need to eat a dozen of them. And when I go off my plan, I don't need to start over on Monday. I simply adjust the rest of my day, or I plan for it, or I have a scheduled time where I'm able to eat a little bit more calories, I'll adjust. This flexibility is what allows us to be successful as dieters. You can enjoy the foods that you want to eat while the majority of your foods are going to fit into this air quotes healthy, air quotes good for you. There are still foods that you can enjoy that fit your life. You know, your culture is important. Your habits are important. Your, your, your daily routine should include some things that you enjoy. And if I can tell you, hey, you can lose body fat. You can put on muscle and still eat these foods well, it's going to allow you to be a lot more successful because it's not about being perfect. It's not about being morally right. What it's about is finding a sustainable approach for you. So hopefully you understand this. Now, if you don't have any idea where to start, I have a free calculator that will give you macros. It'll give you meals um, and you can link it below. It's a free calculator. You just plug in some information. It spits out some numbers. Um, I'll put it on the screen here for you. And it's the basis for how I've done everything for more than a decade. Now, if you're also interested, we have a transformation challenge where you can come in. You can get nutrition and training plans from us. You can also get coaching in the group. We're going to have all 27 Pro Physique coaches doing videos, answering questions, helping you along your journey. And I promise you, the people that are taking part in this transformation challenge for $25,000, they're probably also pretty educated themselves. They're also very motivated. So I find this is a, a very great way to get started with the process of working towards your physique goals and still having some ice cream. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. I want you guys to have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.